Hey, Mixer, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com, and this is a series that's going to show you all the basics of how to mix a song using a variety of Waves plugins. And in this video in particular, I'm going to show you how to use mix bus processing using plugins on your master fader to quickly and easily enhance your mix at the beginning of your mix to set you up for a better sounding mix with less effort and in less time. Let's dive in. So today I'll be using three plugins on the mix bus, the Q10 equalizer, the SSL master bus compressor, and the Kramer master tape. Let's look at one at a time. Now the first question some people ask is why even put a plug-in on your master fader, let alone at the beginning of the mix? And my strategy is why not? Why not use one plug-in or two plug-ins or three early on the mix that can enhance the entire mix quickly and easily? It gives you a boost of confidence and it gets your mix sounding great quickly. Now what I want to do is play you a snippet of the mix without any processing. All the plugins are turned off. These are the raw tracks just balanced with their volume faders. But we can let no one put us down. Let no one bring us down. We value more than that. We gotta stay strong, strong. Invincible. We are incredible. So what I want to do is grab an EQ. And what I've done here with the Q10 is simply enhanced four areas. The first thing I did was actually a little bit of a high pass filter on the entire mix. This rolls off the low end and I rolled off everything below 25 hertz. You don't need that low, low, low stuff in most genres and this cleans up some of the low end even though you can't hear it, which makes your mid range a little more present. Then I've done a little bit of a boost at 54 hertz. This is a 1.9 dB boost, so a very gentle boost here. That increases some of the bottom end of the mix, enhances some of that kick drum, that low end oomph that we need. Then I've cleaned up a little bit here at 359 hertz. I've taken out 2 dB or so of that. That's some of the wonkiness in the mix that just doesn't sound very clear. And when you take out this, not only does it sound cleaner, it allows you to hear the upper mids a lot better. And then there's a slight boost here at just under 8K. Again, this is a 2 dB boost to bring out some of the clarity in the vocal. So take a listen to what happens when I turn this EQ on. But we can let no one put us down. Let no one bring us down. We value more than that. You hear the vocal jump out. You hear more clarity. The mix cleans up nicely. We'll do it again real quick, and we'll take it off this time. But we can let no one put us down. way better with it in. It's not drastic because this is the key here. We're doing subtle, subtle moves, but already the mix is cleaning up and sounding a little bit more polished. The second thing I like to do on a mix bus is grab some compression. Why would we compress the mix bus or the master fader? Well, it allows us to bring a little bit more punch and a little bit more power to the mix and also kind of glues the dynamics a bit together. A mix is all over the place in terms of volume, and we don't want to destroy dynamics. We just want to tighten them up a little bit. This is a very, very old school technique that's still used today by many of my favorite mixers. And one of my absolute favorite plugins on the mix bus is the Waves SSL Master Bus Compressor. It's modeled after a real SSL um, compressor that's built into the console. I used to work on these in the studio, and it just has a unique sound. It's very grabby, very, very musical, and it makes things punch. So what I've done here is a very gentle setting. I have a 10 millisecond attack, which is relatively slow. This will allow your transients to keep coming through and still sound nice. I have the fastest release set so that it lets go of the music very quickly. And then I have a two to one ratio. So this is a very gentle setting and I've just dialed in the threshold a bit just so I see a little bit of gain reduction. I just want it to really pump on the kick and snare drum the most. So take a listen to what this does. But we can let no one put us down. Very cool. Kick drum jumps out a little bit. Snare drum jumps out. The mix gets a little bit more forward. Take a listen to when I take it away now. 
Yeah, when you take it away, the mix seems a little flatter, a little more lifeless. Turn it back on, the bass, the kick drum, and the snare just really start to hit a little bit harder. It's a nice, nice touch. Finally, I have added some tape saturation. This is the Kramer tape. And what does tape do? Well, tape is what we are used to hearing our mixes on. Up until the last decade or so, most everything you ever heard on the radio or that you ever liked that was recorded was recorded to tape. It is very ubiquitous with the sound of the recordings we love. And tape does something amazing. It absorbs transients in a very musical way. We never knew it did this. It's just we know what's gone now in the digital world. And now you have perfect recordings that have the transients captured perfectly. And it sounds weird to us. So what I love is when you have tape emulation plugins like the Kramer Master Tape that sort of absorb some of those transients a bit. What it does to me sonically is it smooths out my mix. It brings in some life because it's actually doing a little bit of compression. It's almost like a natural compressor. And it just adds a sense of life and fullness and musicality to maybe a too squeaky clean mix, which is a really nice touch to add at the beginning of your mix so that you need less of that processing later on down the chain. I've used a very gentle setting here. I used this preset called Mastering Clean and Open. You can do that here under the Mastering Clean and Open. And I've left it as is. I think I turned down the noise. And then I just adjusted the record level so the VU meter was hitting a little bit more in the sweet spot. Let's take a listen to what this does. This is probably the more subtle of the three. Take a listen to the edges of the mix. But we can let no one put us down. It's more subtle, but it's a very, very nice touch. Listen to the synth that's doing the side chain. Womp, womp, womp. Listen to that one a little bit and the background vocals. All of those are on the edges. You'll notice it more there if you pay attention. I'll take it away. But we can let no one put us down. Again, this one's harder to hear, but on good headphones, you might notice the smoothing out of the edges, also bringing up some of the fullness on the edges. I really like what this does. You could take or leave this, but this is a nice fine-tuning piece, I think. So now what I want to do is simply bypass all three. We've got the EQ, remember, just doing very gentle boosts and cuts. Two cuts, two boosts, and these are 2 dB or less increments because we want to be subtle here. We've also got a little bit of gentle compression with a SSL Master Bus compressor. And then, of course, a very gentle, clean and open setting on the Kramer Master Tape. Let's bypass all three. But we can let no one put us down. Let no one bring us down. We value more than that. We gotta stay strong, strong. There you have it, subtle but noticeable enhancement on the mix bus at the very, very beginning of the mix. The mix already sounds more open, has a little bit more life. It sounds more like a real record and less like a bedroom recording. And this gets me excited and encouraged to move down the line when I really start to pull this mix together. Remember, the key here would be subtlety. A little goes a long way on the mix bus. You don't want to overdo it because it's going to affect the entire mix. That's it for now. On the next video, I'll show you how to make the drums pop in the mix.